and we're going to get started. So welcome to the April webinar on best practices for structuring your wiki. I'm Sarah Manley, a community manager here at Wikia, and today we have with us Brandon Ray, another community manager. So what do we mean by structuring your wiki? We're referring to setting up a good framework for categories, namespaces, and navigation so it's easy for users to find relevant content and helps your editor stay organized. So a couple of definitions before we jump in. Uh, categories. A category is a group of pages with a similar theme, such as characters, books, or places. You can add a category link to a page and it will automatically be listed on the category page with other similarly linked pages. Namespace. Namespaces are a basic part of MediaWiki and allow for specific types of content to be grouped together within a specific area on the wiki. These groups are listed and searched separately and each page on the wiki can belong to only one namespace. An example is the user namespace where all of your user pages live. And lastly, navigation. Wiki navigation is a group of links found on the top of all pages that provide, provides links to the most important pages on your wiki. This group acts as a guide to the most important and interesting pages so that folks can find them quickly and easily. Today we'll be chatting about our new expanded wiki navigation. So our agenda and what we're going to go through today. In this webinar, we're going to focus on best practices and tips for setting up these categories, namespaces, and navigation. Brandon, who I introduced earlier, who's a community manager here at Wikia, but who started out first as a user and then a bureaucrat on the Star Wars Phantom Wiki, is going to focus on the categories and namespaces. And then I'll talk later about Wiki navigation. Remember, again, you can ask questions at any time, so feel free to submit them. And we'll have a Q&A at the end and hopefully get to all of your questions. So hi everyone, uh, I've been a member of Wikia since 2006 and I've spent a lot of time with the Star Wars fan and community to ensure that we have a clear, understandable and accessible wiki structure. A big part of that has been a focus on categories. Categories help organize the wiki and make it easier for readers to find related content. Since you can create a wiki on any topic you want, there's no specific type of category that you have to have. Categories are generally wiki specific but there are a set of default categories that do come with your wiki. In this slide, you can see a list of the default categories that come when you start a wiki. You can also find them by visiting special all pages and then filtering the namespace drop-down by categories. You should review the default categories and decide which work for your wiki. I would also recommend thinking about what are the major elements of your topic and then create categories for them on your wiki. So for example, say your wiki is about a TV show. You could create a category for characters, episodes, and seasons. You could also think about more specific details to your topic and then add those. So if, say, you have a wiki about food, you may want to create categories for ingredients or different types of cuisines. I highly recommend starting a conversation with your community about categories they think make sense. That way everyone uses the correct version. Having the most popular names and commonly used terms is generally the best way to ensure that most people find and use the category name you choose. Ideally, every wiki page should be in at least one category. As you may know, categories can get added both in edit mode and in reading mode. An important aspect to note when you are adding categories is to try to use categories that already exist. As you start to type, a drop-down of existing categories that start with the same letters will appear. If you see the category you plan to use, select it. This will help avoid spelling errors or any confusion that could arise. If you don't see the category, then you can add a new one there. After you do so, I recommend you go to that category page to fill in a description of what it is for. Now as you might be thinking, maintaining categories can be tedious. The key thing to remember in the beginning is to just keep things as simple as possible. You don't need a lot of categories on a wiki that's just starting out, so don't get too complex. If your topic is a TV show, then stick to the basics like I said before, characters, episodes, and seasons. As your wiki grows, your category structure can too, and it will most likely happen naturally as the content expands. Characters can branch into additional categories like main characters, supporting characters, former characters, dead characters, and so on. That leads us into what's called subcategories. A category page itself can be in another category. This is what we call a subcategory. So using my previous example, a wiki that's grown a bit might have a category called characters with subcategories for minor characters, former characters, and main characters. 
So how do these categories become subcategories? Well, that's simple. In the same way you can categorize a page, you can categorize a category. If you categorize main character with the category characters, then main characters becomes a subcategory of characters. Subcategory is basically a simple way of saying a category within a category. Well, subcategories are how your category structure can become more complex as the wiki grows. The original categories, like characters, episodes, and seasons, can be thought of as the root categories. All other categories eventually lead back to it, just like the highest branches of a tree eventually lead back to the roots. In order to make sure that it doesn't become too chaotic, you want to keep your category tree organized. Let's use Star Wars as an example. Say you have a category called Jedi Knights, which could be categorized as characters. Jedi Knights, for those who know about Star Wars, is a very broad category that can be used for almost any time in the Star Wars universe. So you may want to make that, make that into more specific categories. You could create additional categories, such as ones for Jedi Knights who lived during the Republic and Jedi Knights who lived during the Empire. You want to make sure both of those categories are categorized as Jedi Knights. That way, they both lead back to Jedi Knights, with Jedi Knights leading back to characters. Sarah will talk about the wiki navigation feature in a few minutes, but a key thing to remember is that a clear category structure can be the core and most detailed navigational structure your wiki can have. If every category eventually leads back to your core categories, then you know that your wiki has a great and organized navigational structure that anyone can follow. Once you've created the structure for the categories, you may want to consider creating some basic policies so that this structure is maintained and kept organized. You don't want too complex a policy, though. So for example, you can include a section in your general manual of style about categories. This, page, this policy can be as simple as all pages and categories must be categorized in appropriate and relevant categories. It's simple, but it can be very effective. If you want to add more explanation to that in a way that suits your wiki, by all means do so. Just remember to keep it simple, because the simpler it is, and the easier it is for people to understand and follow. Having a clean category structure helps with other Wikia extensions, most specifically related pages. Related pages appear at the bottom of a page under the title Read More. They provide a recommendation for other similar pages a reader may be interested in. It's a great tool to get readers to stay longer and explore more of your wiki. Other category features that you will notice are galleries and exhibition. These features provide a more visual display of the pages in a category on the category page. Category galleries show the most popular pages in a category and let readers know what pages other editors and readers go to the most. Category exhibition replaces the older category view of listing the names of all the pages in a category and shows the names of the pages along with an image from that page, giving the reader a better sense of what the page is about. Category galleries are enabled by default on all newly created wikis and category exhibition can be turned on in wiki features, so be sure to check it out. Now let's chat briefly about namespaces. Remember, namespaces are sections within a wiki that allow for specific types of content to be grouped together within a specific area. By default, every wiki has 18 namespaces and two special namespaces. Every page on your wiki is, in, is within one of these namespaces and can be in only just one. So which might you already know? User, talk, file, category, form, and help are the most commonly used ones. The namespace of a page is indicated by the word preceding the colon in the page title. So for example, talk, cat or talk colon page name is a page in the talk namespace. If there is no prefix, the page belongs to the main or article namespace of that wiki. So why do namespaces exist? Namespaces are used for the following reasons. They allow separation of different kinds of content. They allow control of which content is indexed by search engines and provide a way to limit searches to specific types of pages. And they can be set up so some special features apply only to specific namespaces. And they allow easy exporting. Custom namespaces can be created in a wiki if the standard ones do not meet the needs of that wikia project. You may see these on bigger wikis, and they are used to provide a specific use case there. Only staff can create custom namespaces, so you can request they be created by sending us a message at special contact. And when it comes to namespaces, we recommend working within the default and encouraging your community to use the appropriate namespace for different types of pages. 
just like with categories. You don't want to have too many to the point that things become disorganized. Remember, the creation of a new namespace essentially creates a new section of the wiki. The more sections something has, the more complex the structure is going to be, and making something overly complex can start to make it confusing. If you want to add a new namespace, first think about whether there are other ways to accomplish what you're going for. If there are, that's great. Go with that and keep it within the existing namespaces. If not, you can request a new namespace. Just send staff an email and you'll be good to go. Thanks, Brandon. That was a lot of information um, and a lot of good tips for categories and namespaces. And now I'm going to talk a bit about uh, wiki navigation. So as I mentioned in the beginning, the wiki navigation is found on the top of every page on your wiki. There are currently two available types of navigation on Wikia, the standard wiki navigation, which is seen on the top here, and the expanded wiki navigation. Many of the tips I'm going to offer you can be applied to either type of navigation, but I'm going to focus on the expanded navigation today. If you don't have it yet on your wiki, you can activate it in Wikia Labs, which you can find in the admin dashboard. So let's start by reviewing the parts of the navigation. You'll see here on FFXI, the navigation is on the top of the page and includes five main tabs. The first is the default on the wiki tab, which includes links to wiki activity, random page, new photos, and if chat is enabled on your wiki, a link to chat. The following four tabs are all chosen and curated by the admins of FFXI. Next to the main navigation links is the Contribute and Share button, both of which you can click to have access to additional links. If you find a page interesting, click the Share button and you will have the option to share the link on Facebook or Twitter or email it to a friend. When you click on the Contribute button, you will be presented with a menu of links. Included in here are links to edit the page, add a new page, or a new photo, wiki activity, and if you're an admin, a link to edit the wiki's navigation. The expanded wiki nav allows for you to edit the four top level links, the ones that look like tabs. Under each of those, you can add seven additional links, and under each one of those, you can add ten more links. So there actually are three levels there. In total, this allows you to add 280 links to your menu. All the editing is done in source mode. Once you're done, you can hit a preview button there and your menu will be run through our menu validator to ensure that you don't have too many links and that the menu is not wider than the space provided. Since there are a lot of links you can add and many ways to set up the menu, you should think about what are the most important and put those in a prominent place. The navigation shows up on every page on your wiki, so you want to make sure that the links added are the ones most needed by all users across all of the wiki. For level one, we suggest adding the highest level links. For example, if you're on a wiki about a TV show, links to characters or episodes. In addition to links to the main content areas on your topic, we also recommend providing a space for important community links. This will allow people to easily find help, learn local policies, read the most recent news on the wiki, and find out more about who the community is and where to find them. Assassin's Creed Wiki is pictured here and they do a great job with their navigation. Their top level links include games, which then links to the multiple games within the Assassin's Creed franchise. The second tab is spin-offs, which links to smaller games in the franchise that are not a part of the main series. Then there's other media, which links to content that is related to Assassin's Creed but not in the main video games. And lastly, there's the community tab, where you can find links to the list of admins, wiki projects, wiki news, and more. Another trick you can use is the use of magic words. A magic word is a symbol recognized by MediaWiki which triggers the software to do something special on the page. You can use these in your navigation to auto-populate some links. Auto-populating will insert links whatever, for whatever the magic word is calling, such as the most visited content or the most recently changed pages, and then put those automatically into the navigation. These can be used in both level 2 and 3 and are an easy way for changing content to peer all on its own. Ones we recommend trying out are the category magic word, which gets pages from the biggest category on your wiki, the popular magic word, which grabs the most popular pages, the most visited, which gets the, the pages that are most visited, 
newly changed, which will list the pages that were most recently edited, and then top users, so a list of your most active contributors on your wiki. We recommend that you keep your links um, up to date and current so that the most important stuff is, is highlighted there. Um, you may also want to refresh some of the links to keep people interested in checking out new areas. Having seasonal or rotating content can help people come back and stay engaged. Additional links you may want to consider adding to your navigation to do this are links to current editing drives, updates on policies or recent news both on the wiki or related to your topic, and links to help pages, or links to other areas that might be important for new users. Lots of wikis have certain welcome areas where new users can go and learn more information, and highlighting this in the navigation is really helpful so that when folks land there and they can land on any page, they can get to those really easily. As with all aspects of a wiki, don't get caught up in making your navigation perfect from the start. Experiment with different links and layouts, change up the links when different events happen, and add new content. A navigation that is up to date will help all users find what they need wherever they are. So that's a basic overview of our advice relating to categories, namespaces, uh, and the navigation. Uh, we have a couple of questions that have come in. Um, and keep sending in others that you have. Um, so Brandon's going to start with a couple that he has. And like I said, keep sending them in so then we'll answer them. And so the first question that was asked was, what's the minimal number of pages to justify a category and what's the maximum? This is, you know, there's no set answer, so it's whatever works for your wiki. But I would suggest for a minimum number, have it be two. Because if it's just one, then I don't see the need for a category because a category is meant to keep track of things. And if there's just one, then it doesn't need it. And then for a maximum, I'd say there's no actual maximum, but then that may go back to what I said before about breaking it into different subcategories. Because if you have a thousand pages in a category, then you may want to break it up into additional categories too. Uh, one thing on that note, I was just thinking of Brandon too, to your advice of checking the spelling. Sometimes what I think can happen with categories, while they might only have one page, is someone, say, adds an S to yeah. the end of the word, so it's characters rather than character. So as an admin, that might be a good thing to monitor too, is if a bunch of new categories are getting added, it might just be that there might be a letter or two off, so to check that. Definitely. Uh, the next question uh, comes from Random Time, and he says, does the drop-down on category select work on categories that exist as red links but have members. Um, yes, it does. Uh, if you'll see when you go in there, uh, any category that has members will be available in category select. Um, so that should answer the question. <laughs> uh, next question was, does the order of categories matter? Not really, but I would suggest keeping it in alphabetical order just because it's easier to read that way. So. Okay. Um, there's a question about is there a way of choosing which picture represents a page? In category galleries? In category. Uh, no, I believe it's the first image that, uh, that you see on a page. Okay. Well, keep sending in some questions. We'll stay here for a bit longer. Uh, I know many of you who are here are, are probably have um, done a lot of categorizations on your wiki already. Um, and one thing we're also always looking for is if, if anything that we mentioned today um, is something that kind of triggered an idea of, oh, you think it'd be really cool to have a tool that did this with categories or did this with the navigation, uh, basically a product idea or request, please send those in. Because one of the things we're always trying to do is improve um, what already exists. So if you find that on your wiki um, certain aspects of a feature could be improved in some way, we always ask that you uh, send those in as well. Any other questions? No other questions? Okay. guess this was uh, either Brandon and I covered everything or a fairly quiet session. There's more questions. Okay. Um, let's see. When should you use a page and when should you use a category? Um, how many pages in a category do you suggest start making subcategories? Like 
when's a good time to start making subcategories? Um, when's a good time to start making subcategories? I don't think there's a set number for that. I think if you just start to look at the category and it seems like it's getting overwhelming, um, and there are ways that you can break it up, then that's probably a good time to do it, especially if you have so many pages that your category starts to have um, you know, multiple pages, like you have to click next 200 just to get to the rest of them. That may be a good time to look into it. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, one thing I also want to say um, is that these are all recorded. Um, and so I know there was a question about someone having to leave early, but don't worry about it. We record all of these and they'll be up on the same page on community.wikia.com webinars. Uh, so you can find the recordings there as well as on our YouTube channel. I just want to give a little bit of a promotion for upcoming webinars. So we try to do these once a month, usually in the first week or two. Um, so the next one that I'm hosting is on SEO or search engine optimization. And what that means is, you know, how does your wiki show up in search results? So if someone goes to Google and searches for uh, My Little Pony, where does My Little Pony wiki show up? Um, in that search result. So we're going to talk with one of Wikia's actually engineers um, and a founder of the Lyric Wiki. Um, so join us then. That's on May 9th at 4 p.m. And then in June, we're going to be doing some more Wiki tips and going through best uses for recent changes, logs, and history pages. So we want to thank everyone for coming. Uh, we appreciate you guys uh, spending Friday afternoon with us. And happy editing to everyone. Thanks.